Hey, welcome back to Hosting Labs. Today we will be covering how to pass data from a group to a floating group. And this is something that uh, you could be using if you have different elements in your website and you need to pass data from one element to the next. In this case, we're going to do it with a comment section that we're going to be using this data for. So with that being said, Let's go into the question from the user that actually submitted the question. And let's look at what he intend to do. And let's recreate that here in our demo. So the question is, could you please show us how would you work around this sort of issue? So basically when you're creating a comments group in a floating group, so it swipes up from the bottom, but want to link to the post cell. Having issues as the floating group input test and upload button are in the same group as the repeating group. Would you do a custom event? Maybe there, maybe where a hidden button is pressed, we'd love to hear the feedback. Thank you. So let's work through that here in a moment. All right. For this specific scenario, what we're going to do is we have a repeating group, which is like a social media a social media feed, I'm going to open that up so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm selling the bother. So this is the post and this is comment number one. This is the reply to that comment. What we're going to do is we are going to go in rather than having the comment here, click in the comment button will trigger a floating group to come from the bottom. So this would be comment, false comment floating group would be at the bottom and it will be center. The type content will be a comment. And that's it. This would be hidden when the page loads. All right. With that being said, we're going to make this disappear. Now, when we, what we're actually going to do is we're going to turn this into a button. It will be spread out completely and it will be only the outline. But my thing, you would really do that. All right, cool. Now we're we'll going to change these to 16% and this to 16%. And I think that, yep, that should be fine. So now what's going to happen is when we click on the workflow, we are going to show a floating group, the post common floating group. And not only that, we are also going to uh, display data. And the floating group element, and that will be the bottom post. Let's go back and actually change this. This would be not comment, but post. So what's going to happen is yeah. copy this, paste it, paste it aside here. Let's make sure that this is a row. Skip some padding. And basically what's going to happen is so what's going to happen is that we're going to create the workflow. And 
when we have created the workflow, we're going to create a new thing. That is going to be the comment, content, post, comment, input, value. The post will be the parent group post and the user will be the current user. And we're going to test our theory out, make sure that it works. One, two, three, put this for me. And yep, he's under the right post. So as you can see, what we're doing is when we click on the button, and the button is displaying the floating group. And it's also displaying the data that we need to send to the floating group to ensure that all the data is synced. And that data then is used when we created the comment because the parent group is already tied to that and data that um, we have set. With that being said, thank you for watching. This was a user question. If any of you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. I do my best to post answers to the questions that I get asked from the users. And my intent is that I can produce content that answers your questions and help you out in your journey as a no-code developer or using no-code tools or artificial intelligence. Whenever you have any questions, please let me know, like I like mentioned previously, and I will do my best to post an amazing video for you. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.